This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Welcome aboard, Indiana Sports Beat. Coyle and Larry with you as always here on this Wednesday, February 19th. It's hump day from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Thanks a lot for joining us. Jake's at the wheel, keeping us on the track. Plenty to get to today on the program. Greg Doyle from the Indianapolis Star. Looking forward to talking to Greg as always. Matt Weaver from Peaks will join us as well. Indiana on the road tonight at Minnesota. After the game, we'll follow that. We'll talk about all of that. Todd's going to have the latest bracketology. <laughs> that includes no IU right now from Joe Lenardi, at least. Roy Williams, is he headed for his first lo- losing season in 32 years, maybe? I don't know. A lot of games, great games last night to get to. Um, just plenty of stuff to talk about. Todd Leary, how are you today, man? I'm good, but just for the record, Todd's bracketology does include Indiana. <laughs> I figured it might. <laughs> I figured it might. My, my, uh, my non-objective view does include Indiana. Well, there's the, they're, they're on the road tonight in Minnesota, and I don't care whose bracketology it is. If they were to win that game, they will damn sure in. They should be in anybody's bracketology at that point because, to me, they, they need to steal a road game here. They, they haven't done that all season with the exception of Nebraska, which I'll be honest with you, I, it's kind of hard to count that. So, to me, they, have not, they don't have a legitimate road win. I'd like, you'd sure like to see them get that. I'm not saying they have to have that to get in, but – it would sure so secure things for them. Yeah, I mean, there are there are so many different teams across the country. Um, it, well, I mean, you don't have to look any farther than the other Big Ten. I mean, Wisconsin, Purdue, um, you know, probably you can eliminate Minnesota from it now. But, but at least, uh, you know, Indiana, Purdue, and Wisconsin all kind of sit there in a category of, um, you know, they can play their way in and, and eliminate the bubble aspect of it or or you know they're going to sit there and watch a lot of these conference tournaments from across the country and be rooting for uh you know chalk as you always say it be rooting for the 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 leader of the conference to win so that someone doesn't sneak in and steal a bid because you know right now all three of those teams i don't believe are going to get in and and you know they you can go across and look at the big 12 and you know, the ACC and, and, and those conferences. And there's some other teams that are very similar to Indiana. And I don't know that the Big Ten in years past has always gotten the, um, you know, the nod, like I would say the ACC does in, in adding extra teams. So Now, I was wondering now, this year, though, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about that very thing. Is this the year the Big Ten gets that? But some of these teams, I don't know that they look good. It's just weird. I mean, they, yeah, no, it, 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 I don't know. We've heard him say it. We've heard him say it a bunch that, you know, it's a meat grinder in the Big Ten, and you don't know if all these teams are going to beat each other up and knock each other out or if they're all going to play their way in. And they're kind of, you know, they're kind of in that position where, um, you know, it, it, it could go either way. It truly could. I mean, they could all have play themselves just barely out of the tournament or they could all play themselves, you know, into the tournament. And a a lot of it is exactly what you said. I mean, if Indiana can get, they've got some great opportunities with the road games and, and they got three more road games, including tonight. And if they can get one of those, it would make a big difference. Yeah. Gina says Gina from Zionsville after watching two hard fought, and close Big Ten matchups last night. It is, is it too much to ask for IU to have a close game against Minnesota and not get blown out on the road again? Um, yeah, that, that's just going to come back to effort. You know, we've been talking a lot about that this week, effort. You know, you heard Archie even talk about it at, finally. Um, it, it's going to come down to effort. Does this team, you know, do they want to win? What, what, are they, what are they wanting? What are they willing to you know, it's like the the movie. Uh, uh, what was the movie about the Chicago Al Capone movie with what are you willing to do when he's dying? You know, what are you willing to do? Right. How, how much are you willing to give? I mean, it's it's time to step up from a player standpoint. Yeah, and, and they've got to they've got to execute tonight. And, and this is a team, 
you know, I, I would say obviously Northwestern and, and Nebraska are probably the two teams that, you know, most everyone got, if they got road wins, one, you know, cut one or two of their road wins are against Nebraska and Northwestern in the big 10. And, and that probably that next tier right now is, is Minnesota. And this is a game that Indiana, you know, should, should be in, you know, it'll be a matter of whether they make the plays at the end or not. Um, it just is a, I don't know. It's one of those scenarios that I think Indiana should be able to play in this game. They should be able to win this game. And I'll, I'll be crazy interested to see what Archie does, you know, if anything with the lineup or, you know, with, with a short leash on guys, not playing hard or making plays. And a lot of it, you know, some of it is diving on the floor. I know a lot of people say that, but, it's not all just diving on the floor. I mean, it's it's they've got to get, they've got to have a game plan of keeping guys out of the lane, driving and keeping the ball out of the lane. If guys don't do that, you got to get them out and get somebody in there that will. And that you know that's that's what it'll be interesting to see tonight how how tight Archie is on the rotations. Yeah, and we're and we'll talk about this a lot more later. But uh, Zach from Lagodi says, uh, is there any ounce of truth about Beeline to Indiana? Would love to hear about this on the show. Well. First of all, we'll get to this a little more later, but there is no, there is nothing about Beeline to Indiana. Archie Miller's going nowhere. Uh, I'd say at least for another season past this one. So uh, I'm sure John Beeline will end up in college, but uh, it won't be at Indiana. I'm pretty certain about that. And we'll talk more about that later, but we'll stay on the, the course that we're talking about now because of tonight's game with Indiana. And don't forget, it's a late tip, of course, at nine o'clock. But don't worry, we're still going to be there after the game with Todd Leary from live from Yogi's immediately following the uh, contest with Minnesota. Make sure you tune in on Facebook Live to catch uh, what uh, what Todd saw, what he thought, and what happens. Uh, we'll be there for you. But uh, we have some of our better audiences of these late night games, unbelievably. But it's true, they're there, it, man. It, ha- it has been, and you know this is a. Uh... This is one of those weird ones. I know early in the season, I was talking a lot about, you know, what would happen on game days and what, you know, what the players do and that stuff. And this is one of those, you know, this is one of those worst case scenarios where you're on the road in the middle of the week and you're playing the latest game possible. Um, So this is, they'll be laying around the hotel all day long. Nothing is set up for Indiana to come out and have tons of energy in this game. It's, it's a central time, and I don't care what anybody says. When you go someplace else and the time is different, it screws with you. I don't care if you're there for one day right. because you're always looking there or you're like, what time is it? Really? Oh, it seems like this. So you're just always – it's just it's just something a little bitty, but it's always something else in your mind. It, it's just – When your uh, internal clock is different than what's on the clock you're staring yeah. at. It, it's just something a little different. But. And, and it's just another little bitty thing that kind of takes you out of your – your rhythm and, and I think that they need every advantage they can get because this is one of those this is an opportunity here to steal a road win they're better than Minnesota they're better than a lot of teams they've already lost to but they're better than Minnesota and they have an opportunity to get this win tonight and it's going to be up to them whether they go and do that and and you know look at it from Minnesota's perspective like we're all looking at it like Minnesota's already out of the tournament. Like, for the most part, I would say they probably are. When you look at the projections, they probably are. But Minnesota's not looking at it that way, and, and they feel like they could still play their way back in. And and truly, they probably could. But it would take an insane run for them to go on and win their last, you know, four or five games and then go on a, you know, three, get to the finals of the Big Ten tournament or something like that. So they have something to play for, and – and, you know, they're not going to come out and, and be, you know, dead and, and not not have a ton of effort. They're playing for something. And, and this will be, you know, this will be a big time, big time test for Indiana because they should be able to come out of this one with a win if they just execute and play well. For all our fans listening, please share the show out, whatever form you're listening on. If it's a podcast, of course, you can share that as well. But uh, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, however, and make sure you follow us on Twitter, at Leary Todd for Todd Leary and at Jim Coyle ISB for myself. Keep up on everything, uh, complete IU coverage. Alan down in Bird's Eye says, good morning, fellas, and go Hoosiers, even at six under at the barn. Yeah, I think they may actually be a seven-point dog at the uh, up at the barn, and that's pretty deep. Uh, seven points. That's a lot of points in a Big Ten game. Uh, I, I've seen other games where I thought teams were much better than that than a team that they were playing. Right. This this is not one of them. Right. I, I don't see Minnesota being a seven point 
better team than Indiana, even at home. But that's more about Indiana than this, this is about Minnesota. It's more about Indiana on the road than this is about Minnesota. Yeah, the scary part is, as we say this all the time, is Vegas is usually right. And if they've got them favored that heavily, it's, you know, there, there's a reason. And those guys, those guys have a lot at stake um, in Vegas. I mean, obviously we're talking gazillions of dollars and um, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to put a line out there. You wouldn't think that they don't have some major research against. But then Tom you Roy. also look at it tonight. The other game in the Big Ten tonight is Michigan and Rutgers. And that's at Rutgers. And Rutgers is only a one-point favorite over Michigan, which is kind of surprising. They haven't lost at home. Yeah, I know. It, it is. I know, I know Michigan's playing better, but – that's exactly what I'm talking about. I see Rutgers as better than one point, better than Michigan at home. Uh, now I'm not. I would not be shocked if Michigan wins that game, but I'm just Rutgers has, has earned. They're freaking what seventeen and zero at home. They they've yeah, earned right. They're better than a one point, but I but I don't care. I just that's it, it blows me away. But they know what the hell they're doing. These guys yeah, in Las I mean, Vegas, they know what the hell they're doing. Whenever, whenever you look at it, I mean, you, you know, you've looked at it enough over time um, to know. When, whenever you look at those lines and they don't seem to make sense, well, they make sense to somebody, and it's somebody who's got a lot more research in front of them than what we do. And and we're homers for one. I mean, we're looking at it going, oh my gosh, Indiana. I'm not you know, historic. Yeah, but I mean, you've watched enough Indiana basketball to know that's a lot of points, and you oh, know, yeah. Indiana should be able to hang in there, but. I don't know what the margin of defeat is on the road for Indiana, but I'll bet it's – I'll bet the average is way more than oh, absolutely. Five, five and a half points. Yeah, I, I cannot disagree with you. And we, it's just it, – it's the eye test. It goes back to the side. Right. Too many they, – they see Indiana on the road. They've seen the effort that they've right. given. It's like that they're just showing up out of obligation to fulfill the damn contract to play the game at some points. And they it, they've got to rise up. If you're not an Indiana fan, I mean, you all, probably, they need to you, worry about themselves. If, if you're not an Indiana fan and you're like from, you know, uh, let's say Florida or Georgia or somewhere like that, you're looking at these lines and you're like, what in the world are they like? Indiana loses every game by 15 or 20 on the road. Like they're probably making a fortune off of betting against Indiana because we look at it. And we're like five and a half points. That seems like a lot. <laughs> and then other teams are looking at it like they get killed every game on the road. Like that's stupid. But, it, it, you know, it, they, they know what they're doing for a reason. Feel free to hit the text line, 812-269-6367. Tim did. He said Archie should take the team to Mall of America there in Minnesota, let them ride a couple of roller coasters, get their heart rates up before the game so they'll have a little excited when they walk on the floor. Tim, that may be the best damn text you've sent in. <laughs> that makes more sense than anything. Anything. Try something. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not against trying anything. Let me let me tell you, this is one of the hardest gyms to get. I'll and, say, and why is that? For. And why because is it's that? freezing cold? The you know, it's like if you they've renovated uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse where Butler plays. You know, in the last several years, but it used to be when the doors were open to the outside and people were coming in, it was freezing cold inside there because there was no real barrier between the outside. Yeah, these, and, are, these are these old facilities. And this is the way the barn is up in Minnesota. When those when people are coming in and the doors are open on the outside, you can feel the air coming through there, and it is freezing. And they call it the barn because it's like one gigantic barn that you could just fill full of hay. It, it is, yeah. It, and it's old, and the locker rooms are the old, you know, like you probably dressed in in junior high school. They're the old ones with, like, you know, two little bleacher seats inside and – you know they're downstairs, and it's just what does like, that do to, to you to you mentally when you when a team shows up and they they walk in? You got this big cavern. It's cold. You walk into this danky locker room. I mean, it's got to just kind of keep you from getting too too revved up. It this is one of those places that's that way, and and you know some teams do things intentionally, like Iowa when we used to go there. Their locker room, the visiting locker rooms, were all painted pink. And there was some psychological advantage that somebody professor at their school had done where it, you know, it softened the, t the opposing teams up or whatever. But, um, you know, this is just one of those places. I don't know that they do it intentionally, but it's just hard to get um, hard to get excited there and not not excited. It's just hard to get yourself ready to play, not mentally, but physically, because your body is just cold and that makes a difference. Believe me. 
Ryan hit the text line. He'd like Tim's text. He said, IU 68, Minnesota 62 tonight. We'll see. Hey, stay tuned. we got plenty more coming up. Greg Doyle from Indianapolis Star is going to join us next. We'll talk about a lot of things. Of course, he's got plenty to talk about always. He's got a great article out right now. Uh, we'll talk about that as well. So stay tuned. You're back to the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios with Coyle and Leary right after this. It felt good to be out of the rain. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moye. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18 wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Larry here on this Wednesday, February 19th. Coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Couldn't be happier now to be joining one of the best writers in this part of the country. Greg Doyle joined us from the Indianapolis Star. Greg, how are you, man? I'm good, Tim. How are you? Cannot complain. Great piece you got out there. Todd Leary's with us as well, of course. Uh, hi, Todd. Todd, say, hey, say buddy, hi, how are you doing? Friend. Good, good, good. good. Great piece you got out there on the Washington Hatches, man. I did not know that. I li- I'm from originally from Southern Indiana and have experience of my Floyd Central playing Washington. What a great history they have. But of all the history that they do have, and I know a lot about it just from being a fan, I did not know that the part about them having the first integrated state championship team in the United States. That's pretty daggone cool. Is that not incredible? And, and it's weird how people – and it's really weird that people don't know that, and, and that extends to – 
when I was there for the story, I'm walking through the halls of the school and the Hatchet House, and I'm taking pictures of, of that 1936 championship team, and I'm seeing all these great guys on the wall, the Zellers and the Bushies and all that. And a guy's walking down the hall, and he sees me doing what I'm doing. And he you know, asks me, why are you here? And I tell him, and I tell him about the history and the integrated state championship and all that. And, and this guy says he has no idea. Like, I didn't know that. And I'm asking him, well, who are you? And he, he's the president of the Booster Club. <laughs> and, and a 1991 Washington High grad. And if, I mean, if that guy doesn't know that his own school did that, I mean, then very few people do. But hopefully they're learning now. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to learn now because of that article of yours. And I hope so. Be, I'm surprised they don't have a daggone statue of that or, or a gigantic plaque of that in there. That's, that's something to be proud of. Yeah, I'm not sure if they – well, no, I, I can't say that. I was about to say, well, I'm not sure maybe if the people in charge know what's going on there. You know, the history is kind of obscure, but there's a man in town, and I enjoy talking to him on the phone. I found him in Costa Rica, which, by the way, is in North America, not South America. Don't make that mistake. I, I did, and that didn't go over very well. Um, he, that dude, uh, Steve Ellis, I think is his name, is he's uh, borderline obsessed with David DeJournet and the whole story, and I, I obsessed in a, in a good way, I think mostly, but uh, he's a character, and he's in my story too. So it's just one of those – there's so many things I run into in this state where I really think to myself, only in Indiana could this happen. And, and, and I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, just the, the love of basketball and the stories in the state. I've never seen anything like it. Well, my next question is, how the hell do you find some of these? Because some of these, including this one, but a, a lot of your stories are so obscure. When you've got the, the president of the damn booster club that doesn't know a story that you're writing about, wow, that's <laughs> kind of obscure. Yeah, um, most of the stuff, to be to be completely honest, um, I've earned my luck, but I'm, I'm now getting lucky. Um, stuff falls into my lap a lot because I've written, I've written a lot of these things, and so you know I'm basically crowdsourcing the whole state. People, uh, somebody knows if there's a story out there, somebody in the state knows it, and maybe everybody doesn't know it, but somebody knows it. And whoever that somebody is, they oftentimes reach out to me and say, hey, I've read your thing on, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. It seems to me like you might like to know about this. And whatever this is, is usually some like jaw dropping piece of state history that I didn't know. And yeah, I'm not I'm certainly no expert and I'm not finding this stuff on my own every time or, or even most of the time anymore. Right. It comes, right. To, it comes to me. But again, I'm a big believer in, you know, the harder it's like, Todd, you know, this, the harder you work, the more your shots you know, the more you get lucky on the court, right, the harder you work. Right. The more, well, the harder I've worked at this job, the more I'm starting to get lucky. Yeah, well, it, it it definitely has paid off. And I tell you, one of the things I know you and I talked several years ago about some different uh, articles and topics. But one of the things that I have always just been drawn to your articles about is the fact that you have an objective opinion of things because you're not. I, at least I don't think you grew up as an Indiana fan or a Purdue fan or a Butler fan or any of that, you're kind of new to Indiana new in the sense of the last five to 10 years. And um, you just always give an opinion. That's like an outsider's opinion. Yet now you live here and you kind of have a, a stake in the game because you live here now. And, and I think like I've read some of your things and I'm like, this is what, this is what people from outside of Indiana think about people from Indiana because, <laughs> because a lot of times we are so skewed and nuts about, you know, basketball or IU or Purdue or, you know, the Colts or whatever it may be. And that's why I just – I always enjoy your take on things because it truly is that objective opinion because I don't feel like you came into it with any stake in the game. No, it's true. I'm not from around here. Um, I, I now – I mean, I've been here for six years, so this is my home, and I'm going to – you know, like John Mellencamp said, well, on my bucket list is I need to meet that guy. And there's got to be a sports store in dar- involved with John Mellencamp. Nobody knows. I'm, if there is one, I'm going to find it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell it if he'll let me. But you know, I, I was born. I, 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 you know, probably I wasn't born in this small town, but this is probably where they'll bury me. You know, this is home. <laughs> right, so right. That's that's how I want it to be. But the problem with, if I can complain, feel sorry for myself for just a second, is when you come in as an outsider, as I did, and you really are neutral and you don't have any preconceived. The problem is, and Todd, I'm now speaking to your folks, but every state, and I, I've lived in eleven or twelve states. I've been a sports writer in five or six of them. So I've got a pretty, you know, I've been around and I've been, and I, and I can come, things remind me of other things. And this state is very similar to North Carolina. 
it's similar to Kentucky, where there's a dominant school in the state, and everybody knows it, and it's dominant whether because they win more or they just have a bigger enrollment or everybody's grandparents went there or they watched it on TV or, or Bob Knight coached there. Right. It's a dominant st- school, and, and that school gets used to being treated a certain way in the media. And uh, and we all know, the, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, I do, the Indy Star was called the IU Star for years and maybe for still sure. is by some yeah. people. So, <laughs> Most of those Indiana, people live north of Indianapolis. Not, well, the, the folks that, and I don't mean everybody at all, but you know the ones I hear from, which feels like a lot, um, they're not used to someone coming in here and and really being neutral and calling it as I see it about right. everybody, including when Purdue's really good, writing, "Hey, Purdue's really good," and when Indiana's really bad, writing, "Hey, Indiana's really bad." Like that's groundbreaking in this state for someone like me to do that. So people at IU, a lot of them don't like me, and it's just because I've not been the butt kissing Homer that this state's produced in the media for the last 50 years yeah no you're, you're right on the money with that and, and you know you'll take a lot of heat from it because you know we don't sometimes as indiana fans we don't like to hear the truth but but uh most of what you write about it is pretty darn true and we hate to admit it but i agree with <laughs> you it's yeah. been the case since you've been here that's for sure hey I, I can help you out with the mellencamp thing R- richard mellencamp his dad traveled with us in aau basketball back in the 1980s uh, so we got a lot of good stories about Richard Mellencamp. We'll get you hooked up with that one. <laughs> of course, there's a basketball involved with that story. <laughs> of, course of course, there is. There is. Course Only there in is. Indiana, I'm telling you. Yeah, you got to hook me up with, with Mellencamp. There's a bunch of famous names in the state I haven't gotten to. I haven't gotten to Mellencamp. I haven't gotten to the Mattingleys yet. Um, there's a lot of them. So I got luckily I got a lot of time left. But there's a bunch yep. of people that I need to be talking about and writing about. No well, the story is right. Now, and you talk about being that guy, that kind of a maverick. You, that kind of showed up last week with the the, the deal with Devontae. When, because, uh, and I'll be honest, I've said it before. If people don't understand, there are so many times in that press room where the, a, a player will answer a question, and it's just, I got to say, it's very inadequate. If they go out and lay an egg, and and you ask them what what happened, they say, "Oh, we just weren't ready to play," and that's it. It's kind of frustrating when that's all you get from somebody from my standpoint, but I know a lot of people saw that and, and took it one way or the other, but what's your, what's your take on how that went? Well, uh, first of all, what I want to, what I want to say is that the big, the big things I heard that were wrong with my question, because and I didn't ask it in the, in the, you know, I asked it in a very blunt way, but I, I anyway, here, here's the problems people have with it. He's just a kid. Well, wait a minute. He's 23. He's older than Luke and Doncic. Um, <laughs> he, right. I mean, he's, He's a captain at IU. He's a captain. He's a senior. Um, he's not just a kid. You know, he's not, this is not a high school kid. It's not even a freshman. He, I mean, if that's your defense, he's just a kid, then you're wrong. Okay. Um, you never ask that question of a Purdue kid. Um, as a matter of fact, which doesn't make me very original, but one week earlier, Aaron Wheeler finally had a good game, just like Devontae. And I asked Aaron Wheeler the exact words, Aaron, where did you go? Where have you been? And that's in a story I wrote, including the question. I can prove it. So, yes, I would ask a Purdue kid. Um, how could you ask him that on, the, on a day that he had a, a great game? Well, when Devontae Green has laid about 12 eggs this year, guess who doesn't br- get brought into the media center when he lays an egg? Devontae Green doesn't. So, and if, he, and if he did and they lost, is that what you want me to do? Hey, Devontae, your team just lost by four to Maryland. You were 0 for 13. What's wrong with you? you know, yeah, is that, that the time would- to ask him? How yeah, that wouldn't get any we, scrutiny at all. <laughs> right. So there, there, there's no – people keep – they move – everybody has a different reason for hating it. And all I can tell you is he can handle me. He can handle my question. And more than that, Devontae Green's erratic play, and, and it's – I mean, no one's a metronome, right? Nobody scores exactly 13 points a game. No one does that. But there's nobody that does what he does. No one goes 21. 18, 2, 17, 0. No one does that. And it is defined, not just his whole career, but it's defined this IU season. If he would if he would just be consistent, because he's great. He's not like Race Thompson. If you just score four points a game, Race, that'd be great. Devontae can average 15. If you just do that, this IU team wouldn't be on the bubble. So it's, I don't know, people have, like I say earlier, IU fans, and I don't mean all of them at all, just the ones I hear from, they're not used to someone like me coming around asking tough questions like that. And I don't give a rat's ass. Yeah. Well, you know, here, I'm going to give you both sides of this, from my opinion, Greg. Not that you asked for it, but I just, <laughs> from, from Indiana fans, I've talked to a lot of Indiana fans about it. And, and I've got, 
you know, I've got both sides of, of an argument for that in that one, I've been around these guys a lot, like it, because I'm a former player, they'll let me come and do some different things. And I've been around them, you know, in a different capacity than most fans. And, and I'll tell you, like these guys don't want to be treated like kids except for when there's a question that's difficult or tough, or there's a scenario when, you know, they can hide behind being treated like a kid. And most times you'll always hear them say, look, I'm a grown man. I want to be treated like, a, you know, we're, we're grown men. Don't treat us like children. And so answering a tough question like that should be, should not be offensive to them. Yeah. It's a tough question because it's true. There's some truth to it. If there wasn't some truth to it, he would have been able to fire right back at you with, I don't know what you're talking about, and, and rattled off a bunch of his stats. But on the flip side of it, and, and maybe it's different because I'm giving you my 25 years ago version of when I played, but I don't know anything different that happens now, is I will tell you there's no training when it comes to you know going into the press conference. There's no class. The coaches don't talk to you. The administration doesn't talk to you. The assistants don't say, hey, you know, this is this is the way these questions might want to be answered, and you might elaborate a little bit more on this and, or different things. Like, there's no coaching when it comes to that side of it. You, if you played well, you go in there and you answer the questions however you do. Now, if you say something stupid, you're going to hear about it. But they don't ever coach you into, look, you know, somebody you, you might have some tough questions. You might want to think about this in advance. These are some things they might ask you going in. None of that ever happens. So you're going in as a kid – being put into a scenario where you as a you as a professional and what you do, you go to these every week. Devontae, like you said, he goes to, based on his play, probably five to seven of these a year, and he doesn't think about it ahead of time. They, no one coaches them to, to maybe, you know, prepare your answers or at least be thinking about how you would answer a certain question. I hear all that, and you're, you're probably right about that. I don't know what happens behind the scenes, but in, in everything I've said about – that whole question I asked, including to you guys, um, never once have I said I got a problem with Devonte Green's answer. Sure. Like I, yeah, I, right. got, I got no problem with it. The, my, I, my, I mean, none. He can he answered how he answered it. And he didn't. He actually asked me to elaborate, and so I said, okay, I'll elaborate. And people are actually hearing what they want to hear. They're saying, no, no. They heard me say, no, you elaborate. That's not what I said. I, I, I talk fast. I'm from Mississippi, so I my words come out you know i combined five of them into one word but i said <laughs> so i'll elaborate so yeah. i'll elaborate and then i elaborated i then said you know you're you have a lot of games where you have 20 and then zero i said you're too good for this you're an nba player or no no. i said you're an nba talent because he is he's not an nba player but he's an nba talent and you're too good to do this why do you do it so i elaborated anyway my point is is that i i never once have i said and Devontae Green didn't even answer it. No, I don't, I don't really care. I mean, I care what he said, but that's my issue is not that. My issue is everybody's mad at me for asking a 23-year-old man a question. My thing is, you can't, in life, you can't have it both ways. If you're a fan, and again, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking to the ones that are all been out of shape. If you're a fan and you think, you know, you treat these guys like, like idols. You, know, you pay a ton of money for tickets. Um, you, you get their autographs. You take pictures. You, you tweet about them on social media. You, you, know, you, you idolize them. And you, that, because they're grown men, but then when you, so they get asked a tough question, but they're just a kid. Well, let's, let's spin it this way. If they're just a kid, then you're kind of creepy for fawning all over them. Right. But, but they're not just a kid is the point. They're not. So again, I, I'm still waiting for the legitimate, the legitimate complaint about my question. I haven't heard it yet. Well, there's not one. <laughs> That's the right right, point. Agree. And the questions are going to get a lot tougher for Archie Miller, uh, Greg, as this season continues. If things continue the way they have been, they're on the they're on the fence right now. They're teetering between being able to make the tournament and not make it again uh, for Archie's three seasons here. Questions will get tougher if they're not able to do that. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a team that's kind of crumbling, and he's got a team that doesn't have a win on the road yet. And I'm not sure. Granted, they've got some nice home opportunities. Uh, the Big Ten is so good. Almost every game is a is a chance to improve your resume. In fact, for them, every one is. But they got to beat somebody on the road. I would I would think at some point to get in the tournament because when the selection committee is looking at all these teams bunched together, there's a bunch on the bubble and they all look the same, except for one thing: can this team win anywhere but home? Because guess the one the one place you're not going to play in this tournament is at home, especially if you're like an 11 seed. You're not going to you know if you're a top four seed. You know, there's a regional in Indianapolis, for example. You might get sent there if you're a top four seed. Well, you're not if you're a 10 seed. So can you go to San Diego and win? You haven't yet. 
Greg, what do you got coming up next, man? You've always got something great coming out. So uh, what, what can uh, the fans expect next? Thank you. I, I have two fun ones. Um, and one of them's going online today. Might be on there right now. I don't know. I'll be tweeting that one. It does. I, there's a barber in Cloverdale, Indiana, a barber. And this is an only an Indiana story. He's become like a, you know, he's a, a beloved figure in, in Cloverdale, one haircut at a time. And he's the town's basketball historian in a way. And he cut Cooper Neese's hair. He, I mean, he, he anyway, that's not, that's, that's not why he's a big deal. Cause he cut Cooper Neese's hair. But anyway, this guy, he just, I, I wrote 2,500 words on a barber and people who know how long that is. That's pretty long. I guess that's Some, a long story. You know, <laughs> on the surface, you kind of would wonder, well, why would you write 2,500 words on a barber if you're a sports writer? And I promise you, by the time you get to the end of the story, you're going to say, well, why is the story over? I want it to keep going. I mean, it's just, <laughs> he, he's a great story. And I got another story coming out in a couple of days. There's a legendary former, and he wrestled at IU. His name is Bill Bain. Wrestled at IU back in the late 50s. Um, Big Ten tournament, placed third three years in a row with the U.S. Olympic trials, almost got into the 56 games in Australia. Became a legendary coach at Beach Grove High School up here near Indy. And he, the wrestling room is being named after him at Beach Grove in a couple of days. The state tournament's coming up, and and he's he's a great story, and and he's a great story in part because of what he did away from wrestling. So anyway, those are two fun stories to write, and they're coming up. Well, make sure you find those uh, in the Indy, Indy Star. I'm a subscriber. You should be too. Uh, make sure you check out that good. Greg, I can't thank hey, you enough for joining us, man. It's been a blast. Let me say one more thing real quick. Um, I'll be at the Purdue game Saturday. I'll be at the IU game Sunday. And I'm going to walk up to Devontae before the game um, during warm-ups. You know, a lot of people don't do that, but I do. I go say hi to Joey Bronk. I say hi to Trace Jackson Davis. I got players on that, that team that I hug when I see him. I got coaches that I hug when I see him. Uh, Devontae Green and I don't hug, apparently, but um, I got no problem with him. And I, I bet he's got none with me. Anyway, I'm going to talk to him for the game briefly. And I'm going to say something motivational to him and if he'll let me do it. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm going to say it to him. And I hope he goes out and scores 40. And then I'm going to write about, I mean, it won't be the, you know, I'm not going to be the story, but it'll be part of the story about Devontae scored 40. And, you know, here's what happened before the game. It'll be somewhere in there. So anyway, I, I kind of hope that all happens. We'll see. <laughs> I hope it works out well. And I hope it works out well for the Hoosers. But I can't thank you enough. I look forward to that. I look forward to your pieces coming out, Greg. And thank you. And I hope we can uh, have you on here again sometime, man. Sure. Sure. Result. Thank you. See you, Todd. Good. Enjoy to see you, buddy. Yep. Here's Greg Doyle, Indianapolis Star. Thank you so much uh, joining us here on the Indiana, Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle Leary on this Wednesday from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios. Man, that was a great, great uh, interview with him. We'll look forward to talking about that when we come back. And plenty more as Indiana takes on Minnesota tonight. We'll be back to the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. 
voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times. The golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18 wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hi, this is AJ Moye, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. It's Coyle and Leary, except for Coyle is uh, gone right now. We've we've lost him for the minute, but um, just had a great segment with Greg Doyle from the Indianapolis Star and, and him talking about not only the pieces that uh, he's got coming out, which are uh, insanely interesting, um, but but talking about his his question to Devontae Green and the I guess tough question that people looked at and and his view of it. And um, I know as an Indiana fan, I have talked to uh, a lot of different people about that particular incident. I guess we'll call it. But um, you know, I it, it, as a, as a former player, I don't see anything really wrong with what. He asked, maybe he could have asked it in a little softer way, would have made everybody feel a little bit better about it. But um, I think he has figured out over time that, uh, you know, he, Greg Doyle is more of a direct uh, direct type reporter, and he's going to ask, I think in his mind, he's, he's looking at it as asking the tough questions. I think he asked it in a tough way. I, don't, I think it could have been a little softer way. Yeah, and that's okay. And that's okay because I think the, uh, what, what, part of what he said was people are not used – to that and they're not they're used to in that press room it's a pretty soft press room uh even to coach archie miller the questions are not what i would consider that tough very often um and, so and look, yeah hey, let, let's not i mean let's not sugarcoat it either this happens all over the country this would be the same case if you were at duke or north carolina or anywhere it's the same thing but i mean that you know th- those press rooms are i don't know a better way to say it than to say they're protected and that you know you if, if you go in there and act like an idiot and ask some ridiculous questions and put people in bad positions, you're not going to get a press pass anymore. And, yeah. and, and, but that doesn't happen very often. I'm also not saying they, you know, they make you come in there and only write, you know, flowers and roses and, and candy and nuts. I mean, it, it, they'll let you, they'll let you get, I, I, I think the point in all of that with Greg Doyle was if he wanted to, I mean, you and I right now could take the exact same question and we can soften it up and ask it in a way that doesn't sound near as point blank and blunt and direct. And and I don't think anyone would have had a problem with it. And it's in it truly, it, it's a question that I think Indiana fans would like to know the answer to. I mean, I would, I'd like to know why he, you know, why there's games when it seems like he just is, is a non-factor and, you know, is it because he doesn't understand his role? Or I mean, I, I'd like to know his perspective. I, I know I have my opinion of why it is. Well, I promise you, there there have been many occasions, and I, and I I hate to use the same example, but when we've been in there, this happened. There was a I think this was like last year when they're going through this this deal where they've lost six seven games in a row, and you see them come out, and their effort is just lackluster. And you you ask them, hey, all right, what's the deal? And and they just simply come out with a, uh, we just didn't come out ready to play. And then that's it. 
And you're like, that can't just be it. There, there's more to it. What do you mean you just you didn't come out ready to play? Your your season's on the line. Your career's on the line. This program's identity is on the line. How do you – what do you mean you just didn't come out? What does that mean? Now, that doesn't get asked, but you want to ask that. That. That's what you want to, but Greg did, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with it. And, and here's here's something to also think about. So this is what happens after a game. After a game, you go into the locker room, and the coaches have, you know, let's say five to ten minutes to sit there and either, you know, it generally when you win, they don't come in and say anything, and they go on to their own locker room, and, you know, J.D., the, the sports information director, comes and grabs a couple guys, and they go to the press conference. If it was a bad game and you didn't play well – you know, they'll come in and, and, you know, rip your butt about something, whether it was, hey, you guys weren't ready to play today or, um, you know, we've got to finish games better and we've got to be mentally tougher and all that. And whenever you hear a guy come in to a press conference as a player, I'm saying, and you hear him say, you know, we had too many live ball turnovers or we just weren't ready to play. That's probably the message they got five minutes ago when the coach came in after the game and screamed and yelled about something. And so, you know, a lot of it, please, please you got to understand it. And I was trying to make a point because I think, I think this is something that should be done. And maybe it is now. Maybe I'm totally off base and, and maybe they are coached more on it now. But I don't understand why, um, why there wouldn't be a, you know, a training session on, you know, how to answer questions and things to think about, you know, before you go in there. Don't be caught off guard by a question and, and expect some tough questions. You know, they're, they're, you're not, you want to be treated like an adult and, and then you got to be ready to answer some adult questions. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I've said that, uh, I, I, think, I think that they should have that. Yeah, I, I I I don't understand why that's the case. I mean, I'm telling you, it's amazing when we when we graduated. Uh, I was shocked at the fact of you know how many, how lack, how little, uh, I'll say training and stuff we had for dealing with media and and that's one of the things in the long run. I think uh, you know, like let's use something as an example. Trace Jackson Davis is going to play in the NBA. We all we all probably guess that, right? I mean, he's probably at some point going to play in the NBA. Well, well, one way to, you know, make more money is to market yourself in the right way and, and, you know, be a, be a guy that answers questions or be a guy that, you know, I mean, he, he could be creating his own brand for Nike right now based on, you know, how well he answers questions and he could, they could want him to be a spokesperson. There's a reason why Grant Hill, you know, back in, in 1998 was on every Nike commercial. It's because, you know, he marketed him. They, he was a smart kid that answered questions properly and was probably trained better to do that. His dad was a professional athlete. He was probably talked to about those things. And that's something Trace Jackson Davis could probably benefit from and make more money in the future if he was trained on how to go in and answer these questions and be, you know, be a person that was more, you know, upfront and, and thought these questions and answers through. I've said many times, I, I I really think that they these they should put these kids through just a little bit of training, have them meet with the media, and then totally ironically, great. funny enough, uh, Fred Calgo, who's a sports director at the CBS station in Louisville, uh, someone that I, I had the opportunity to work under when I was just out of college, and fortunate. But I just saw recently him and his assistant sports director there met with U of L football players, and that's exactly what they were doing. The U of L was having them meet with media members and just go through that stuff, and it is. The perfect thing to do. It just helps put them at ease because that's part of it. They're not at ease. A lot of people are not comfortable speaking to media at 19, 20 years old. I get it. Let's help them out a little bit. Sure. It, and I, I could be totally wrong. They may do that now. Uh, J.D. Campbell wasn't the sports information director when I played. Well, if they do, it does not It does it, not help him. It, it, yeah. I mean, they, they might need to elaborate on it a little bit if they do. But but you're right. I mean, there, there's... There is nothing they would take not take away from their basketball time or anything at all to to have a little bit of thought process into you know how you answer these questions and things you need to think about and, and quite frankly it may make it may make them look at the game a little bit different and look at their own play and, well, speaking and of the analyze game, things different. We got one tonight, Minnesota on the road, nine o'clock late. Of course, after the game, 
around 11 o'clock. We'll be coming to you live from Yogi's after the game of Todd Leary as we'll be talking about hopefully an Indiana win on the road because, as you heard Greg Doyle talking about, Indiana doesn't have a road win. And, and when the committee does look at that stuff, we've talked about this, Todd, that what that one in six or whatever it is, Indiana is one of the worst teams in the Big Ten alongside of um, Rutgers, unbelievably. But the other bad team is like Nebraska and Northwestern. Those teams have no road wins or – very little, but Indiana with one road win, and that's over Nebraska. So that really doesn't count. Right? I mean, they it, need it really, a road win. You hate to say it doesn't count. It's a good thing they have it. It's a good thing they didn't lose that game. But yeah, it, it really. Um, the, the, here, here's the real benefit for Indiana. The next four games are all quad one win opportunities, and right now Indiana sits in a decent position. I mean, they've got four quad one wins, and and that you know that's probably what has them as is the last four in or first four out or whatever they're at right now. And and that's not a bad position for them to be in, but they've got to capitalize on these next four games. And, and you know, this would be – if they could oh, – this is ifs and nuts or, you know, whatever Coach Nuts right, saying right. was. But, I mean, if they could win tonight and win at home against Penn State on Sunday, um, you know, they would they would seriously have solidified – not just being in the tournament, but they would be. They will move up so much with those two wins. The points they would gain off of, you know, the quad point system and the net rankings system and all that would just be would be big and be a big deal. And and so you know, you and I have talked a bunch on and off the air about that net ranking and how I don't like it because it factors possessions into too much and whether you blow a team out or or you know hold a team. Indiana not only needs to win you know, out of these next, what is it, five games, they, they need to win a couple of them, buy a whole bunch of points, and hold the other team to, you know, as few points as possible. And uh, I know that sounds stupid, but from a net ranking perspective, that's why some teams are ranked above Indiana right now because they've had, even the games they've won, they've had those close games with Northwestern and Nebraska, and and they needed to win those games by 10-plus points, and and get a bigger net ranking score. And and the, I hate to say it, Coach Knight always hated those things and the RPIs and all that, but it's a bigger deal now. We don't have Coach Knight to rely on. We've we've got to we've got to win those, you know, those net ranking battles and and that's a big deal for them right now. Absolutely, because you've got a lot of other teams that are fighting and one of those is Minnesota. Minnesota is a team that is – They don't fighting. think they're out of it. I mean, I think everybody else looks at it and thinks they're out of it. We think they're out of it. I mean, at 12 and 12. They're but I promise you they're not going to play like they're, no, they're in no. it tonight. They're going to play like they need this game, For exactly sure. how Indiana needs to play. It, and if they – let's just – you know, let, let's say they have five games left. If they won four of those five, and if they win the, the Big Ten tournament and won, you know, three games in the Big Ten tournament, I mean, they would have that'd be seven more victories for them. They they probably would be close to being in, so they're not out of it completely. I mean, the the you know the numbers have not eliminated them, but you know they would have to go on a major run, and that would start tonight. They can't afford to lose a home game, that's for sure. They would definitely be out if Indiana beats them tonight. Yeah, you got a lot of teams that are that are going to be scrapping for for some spots. Oh, because... it's amazing! It's amazing. I've you know I've started studying this a lot in the last few days. I know you saw my my homework yesterday. I mean, I have, I have gone through every conference and I'm going to, I'll put out a report here on our show uh, on all the, all the conference tournaments that start next week that Indiana fans need to be rooting for, you know, certain teams to win them because we can't have some bid stealers. Well, and you talked yesterday, you said that uh, you, Indiana fans should hope for Purdue to win that game at Wisconsin last night. They did not, although they played them very tough. That yeah. was a 69-65 Wisconsin home win over Purdue. But more importantly, to me, that kind of puts the final nail in Purdue's coffin. I just can't see them coming back. What are they, 14 and 13 right now? Um, ah, they've got some good wins, but man, oh man, I just – they're good. They, they've got a really, really tough row to hold. Yeah, I mean, they're they're kind of in that same position of what we just talked about with Minnesota, except for they're they're sitting a little bit better. I mean, they've got some more quality wins, but you know, Purdue at fourteen and thirteen right now, seven and nine in the league. Um, you know that that fourteen and thirteen hurts them, and um, you know it, it's that. But but they are they have such quality wins, and they have a good. Uh, net ranking score and a decent one they could easily still play themselves back in it and they've got the talent to do it you know there's some of their problems have 
uh, you know, they've got, they've had some of the same problems as Indiana. They struggle to shoot and they struggle to score. And when they go on the road, obviously that gets magnified. And, you know, they, they have had, you know, if you look at Purdue's team, not that, not that we're going to spend a whole lot of time on Purdue's team, but they've had some of the exact same problems Indiana has. And, and Greg Doyle hit on it a few minutes ago. Aaron Wheeler, for them, I think is a guy they expected to rely on a whole bunch more, especially for shooting and scoring. And he's kind of had a season like Justin Smith. I mean, it's been very similar to where there's games when he looked, especially early on, when he looked like he was going to be an all-star. And then he just kind of disappeared for a while. And and so, I mean, they've dealt with a lot of the exact same issues that Indiana and Indiana fans have. So it's just, uh, you know, Purdue is Purdue's going to be battling. I mean, they're going to have a big game. Indiana's going to go there in a, you know, a week and a half or so. And, and that'll be a huge game, I think, from their perspective as to whether they can make it or not. Oh, absolutely. Hey, we got a lot more coming up. We got uh, some big game, Big Ten games from last night to talk about. Obviously, Indiana taking on Minnesota tonight. Michigan also at Rutgers. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, stay tuned. Plenty more Indiana sports beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Coy and Larry back with more right after this. It's a nice day for a white wedding. It's a nice day to. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18 wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat. With Jim Cole. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Been snooping on my door. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat here on this Hump Day edition, Wednesday, February 19th. Coyle Larry with you from the Golf Club League of Point Studios. It's game day, folks. Indiana up, up north. Up north. 
They take on Minnesota tonight. Late night tip, Todd Leary, 9 o'clock. After the game, it'll be coming to you a tick late around 11, live from Yogi's after the game with Todd Leary, of course, brought to you by Best Beer Incorporated and Henry Nethery Remax. But uh, we'll be there. Hopefully, it, uh, it, it'll it make it a lot easier, Todd Leary, if we're talking about a, an Indiana win, because if they pull that win off, that pretty much lets them, I don't want to say coast, but uh, you get a road win, ah, they, they've got enough. But you cannot rest on your laurels because they're too close to the bubble. Yeah, I mean, it, it It would go a long way in solidifying, you know, a, a position in, in the in the tournament, but, you know, right now, Right now, I, I think Indiana fans would all be okay with being that 11 seed. I think it's the 11 seeds that play in that play-in game on the Tuesday in Dayton. And, um, you know, I, I, I really think Indiana needs to try to play themselves above that and, and get, you know, make it so that that's not an option. And, and it would all start with a big road win. And they've got, you know, the, the other two road games after tonight are, you know, Illinois and Purdue. And those are both going to be extremely difficult to get. Um, Illinois, I think, is kind of catching catching their wind again. And they got a great, gigantic win last night at Penn State. I mean, Penn that, State that had won. That is a huge win, Oh, man. my gosh. I mean, Penn State had won seven games in a row and was ranked in the top ten in the nation. And you just they just went in there and got a gigantic quad one win. And that's going to – you know, I, they, they've lacked respect um, – I feel nationally, Illinois has lacked a lot of respect. And even when they've played well and uh, beat some good teams, I I think that I think that they've been overlooked. And they're a team I think will play themselves up into a three or four seed and, and make a big run in the NCAA tournament. And that'll be a tough road win for Indiana to get. So this one tonight would be would be the one I think they have the best chance of winning. Yeah, I agree with you a thousand percent. And it would be a, a good enough. It would it would not be a great one, but it would be good enough. Uh, to it's add a quad to that. one. It's a quad one win. So I mean, that's quad one win on the road is a big deal in, in bumping your score up, especially when you have four already and you're you're sitting on the on the bubble. They're, Indiana is squarely and they're they're not even squarely on the bubble. They're sliding off the left side because yeah. Joe Lenardi in his latest bracketology and people can laugh or whatever, but he's pretty damn close every year. They're not in. He does not have them in. They're they're the first four out right now. But that's again, like you said, we've said that that that's very fluid. That changes it's, yeah, tonight. It, it is. It's all gonna and, and it changed last night. I mean, some of it changed last night. I mean, heck, you've got you've got some teams that uh, you know. There's a couple of teams that lost home games that uh, are are way up there in the rankings. And you know the the way the NCAA is doing it, I don't know if this is just the first year I've ever studied it this closely, or if they've always put this information out. But they've got so much different, you know, information out that kind of tells you where they're looking and who they're thinking at. It's almost pretty easy to become Joe Lenardi's job. I think has become a lot easier than in the past. I think he did all the research and homework in the past, and and you know he was kind of the only person around that that really did that, I guess, because, but now it's all out on the internet. I mean, you can go watch that projected NCAA tournament team tracker. I mean, when you go look at that thing, it lays it all out for you. And it kind of tells you how they calculate everything. And uh, the net rankings tells you how they're calculated. Although you need to be a professor to, to figure it out, but um, you know, it's all kind of laid out there and, and there's a bunch of teams on there that I don't understand. I mean, I, you know, I was talking to you about it, last night when we were watching the games on TV and, and there's some teams up there that just don't make any sense to me, but um, you know, that all, I, I believe that will all wean itself out, you know, in the next three weeks of, of the end of conference plays. Yeah. We're certainly uh find out tonight, a great game in Michigan at Rutgers. That's, that's a, that should be a damn good game. Of course, in Las Vegas is saying the same thing, making it a one point game. So I'm looking forward to a hell of a game with that one. Do they play at seven? I hope. Uh, sorry, Man. they play. Yeah, they play at seven on the Big Ten Network. But good, good. but you know, here's something to keep an eye on, and I have no idea if there's been a report out on it or not. But Isaiah Livers in that IU game, I know they didn't need him at the end, but he limped off the floor, and you know he's had that groin injury where he was, you know, he was in and out of the lineup. And let me and tell you what Michigan is like with and without livers. They, yeah. they are a different team. 
hundred percent. And, and, you know, he is, he, here's the difference. Here's the way to look at it. He's their best player. There isn't any question about that. And imagine taking the best player off of any team across the country. They're obviously a different team. Now they have some other talented players, but he is without a question, not just their most valuable player, but their most talented player. And, you know, if they don't have him, I, I this is how big a deal I think that is. If they, if they don't have him, I, I don't think they're an NCAA tournament team. Oh, that and, oh, that's a fact. They won't make the tournament without him. Yeah. I, I don't, if, if he doesn't play tonight, they absolutely do not win this game. Yeah. Or I, I, I would so be either. shocked to see them win this game without him. Yeah. Uh, I Rutgers agree. is, hell, Rutgers is undefeated at home. I mean, and they're, they've shown they're a good team. They're legit. Um, I think they're, they're not, I don't think they're as good as, say, Penn State or Illinois. They're not in that group. I really don't think they are. I think they're, the, I think they're in the second Big Ten group. Um, I'm not sure who all's in that group, but I, I'm with you. And this is what I mean about lack of respect is, I mean, Illinois still in the projected NCAA team tracker. So this is this is how where they use the net score and they use the quad one scores and or quad uh, quad scores because they go all the way down to quad four. But um, in that projected thing, you know, Illinois is behind Indiana. It, it really, I mean, I'm staring at. I'm it right sitting now. here shaking my head in silence. Rutgers is number forty five, and Illinois is number forty six. Indiana's number forty three. Wisconsin's number forty-two. Yeah, that's it, that's I mean, why that's, there's some of these. Some of these they focus on. Uh, they I factor, guess an aspect they don't of, they don't factor in the eye test on any of these. You know, any of these. Uh, you know, I'll call them analytics or the you know the net rankings and all that stuff. One of the things that I read about in this, they don't really say what weighs in the most. They just give the different criteria for how they are going to make their decisions which they leave it open for you know a lot of a lot of gray area but one of the factors this this might surprise you it surprised me for sure was one of the factors that they take into account is what the and they put it in quotations bracketologists just across the country suggest or or uh, or you know predict so if like Joe Lenardi predicting Indiana is going to be in, they factor that in, which is surprising to me because Joe Lenardi's not on the committee and Sagarin's not on the committee. And, you know, not, the, those Ken Palm's not on the committee, yet they take those people's opinions as to who should be in into account when they're determining what teams should get in and shouldn't or shouldn't get in. Yeah, that surprised me. Well, it's, they all kind of focus on a different area that, that allows it to skew. And that so by taking all of them, it kind of brings in an aggregate um, from from without a subject, subjective look at it. And sometimes the subjective look is wrong. So this is kind of a way that they try to even that out. Yeah, but OK, so let me just let me just say why that surprises me. And I'm not saying this is the case. I'm, I, I do not know anything about him at all. But let's just say, for example, Joe Lenardi gets a package in the mail from Nike that says, Hey, we'd really like for Oregon to be a two seed. Here's the latest 75 versions of our Nike, whatever coming out. Joe Lenardi is probably going to have Oregon up there <laughs> wherever they needed to be in that case. I, just, I can't believe they would use something that they can't, you know, the committee, surely they're not, they're not being skewed by anyone's outside opinion. It, taking people that are not part of the committee's, you know, prediction of something when they can't control that. I'm not trying to create a, a crap storm here. I'm just saying, like, I I was shocked that they admitted that they would take, you know, anyone's opinion or prediction outside of those people that are in that room. Well, then it would be just a subjective selection only. No, it wouldn't. If you I, just I, use the people in the room. You if, the you, if you use all of the stuff they do like the net rankings and oh, all that stuff, oh yeah, yeah and then take the people that are in that room and, and we all kind of agree on it. i mean you, you know, it's like a jury of peers right I mean, and you know if, if you got to assume everybody you're not going to get 15 people you're I don't surprised that they use the sagarin ratings and the pomeroys and all that i'm i'm surprised that they they said it says in the selection criteria they factor in the predictions that and they list them ken palm sagarin uh joe lenardi the, they quote the bracketologists 
and I'm surprised that they would allow those people's opinions to influence them. Well, it's not their opinion. These are these are numerical formulas. They're not. That's that. See, that's that. What makes them different? There is no opinion whatsoever in these. That is the complete different of the committee, which is nothing but opinion. And so that is why a, a way of balancing out because there is no subjectivity in Sagarin, in Pomeroy, in in that. There's no subjectivity. It's but skewed the, in a way. In, in those particular ones, you're correct. Ken Palm and those those are numbers. Those are analytics, and those are all factored in. Not the quote. That's why I keep saying bracketologists because they use the term bracketologists. So Joe Lenardi, for example, his is not based. I mean, he's got he uses the eye test. He admits it. Right. I, I so do, he could be skewed. He I do not. Skewed, I don't think that they're using Joe Lenardi, if that's what you're saying. It says bracketologists. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Who else know. would they be using? I don't. I'd, I'd have to read it to understand, but they're they're not using Joe Lenardi to select the, the field. I can assure you that. That's that's a given. Now, they may have worded something incorrectly, and I, I'd like to I'd have to look at it, but they're not using anybody outside of that. I would be surprised. I understand that was my now. that was my point in saying the whole thing. Yeah, I no, I I, I, I get your surprise too. because yeah, there's no way. No, that's not happening. They're not using Joe Lenardi. I don't know what they mean exactly, but maybe I think they're calling Ken Pomeroy and, and Jeff Sagrin and those guys bracketologists. I think that's the word that they're. I think that's who they're talking about. I'll but they're not. I'll read it to you. But uh, they're not talking about like Joe Lenardi. But yeah, I would be shocked as well. I get that. Uh, how about Roy Williams, man, in North Carolina? Heading to his first losing season in 32 years. That dude has had a career. Uh, and he's got four McDonald's All-Americans coming in next year. So I'm not crying for North Carolina. He Nobody's pro- crying for North Carolina. But he probably had four that came in last year. I mean, I, I'm with you. I'm just I'm not crying for him either. Roy Williams is a is one of the uh, elite great people, not just coaches, but, um, you know, he, I, I was recruited by him just a little bit when I was in college and could not have. Now he was at Kansas then, right? He was, yes. And he was one of the, you know, most um, gentlemanly like people I, that I dealt with. Southern gentleman. He was. He, my, uh, you talk about somebody falling in love. My mother absolutely loved Roy Williams like he was he was great to me and she was we were we've been big fans of Roy Williams ever since Baylor uh big win last night 65 54 over Oklahoma that's 23 straight for the Baylor Bears man that's they insane. are they there has not been a team do, that we've called dominant this season but Baylor and, and Gonzaga they're probably as close to that as we're going to talk about I mean if you look back at records over the previous years both these teams have a, a record that say that's similar to anybody else from last year, year before that, year before that. I mean, Dayton. How about Dayton? All right, Dayton has lost two games. Both of those games were in overtime. One to Colorado, who's having their best season in forever, right. and the other, the other to Kansas. Those are their two losses in overtime to two great teams. I mean, damn, Dayton is a team. Look out! You got Obi Toppin, who's a, a legit. Uh, first round pick in the NBA. They Dayton has a legitimate shot to win the national championship this year. This is going to be Without one hell of a doubt. tournament. I, oh, this is going to be so much fun. Oh my gosh, I, we I, may I, have to go to Prince Lick for the weekend because I may need a room just to to rest my heart at night. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm telling you, if if fans, especially you know, just diehard basketball fans, have not watched Dayton play, you're missing out because they are. They are good in every sense of the word. They play good defense. They're good offensively. And they've got, in my opinion, the number one pick in the NBA draft. And if somebody takes James Wiseman over Obi Toppin, I'm just going to tell you, in the long run, in a 10-year career, they're going to regret it. Because oh, Obi Toppin, Obi Toppin, so smooth. Obi Toppin is, will He's have like a butter. better 10-year better career than James Wiseman will. That dude, is he's a freak, man. He can shoot. But the thing is, not only can he shoot, he shoots really, really well. From out there, he looks good. He doesn't have some funky shot. He is fundamentally sound, big, athletic. That dude, he's a badass. His his body type and athletic ability. You know, I, of course, James Wiseman's big, and and you know he's super athletic and all that too. It's just you know, there's some guys that are quick jumpers that are fast jumpers. He's an athletic Larry Bird. He, uh, that's athletic, athletic, that's athletic. 
That's he's, a stretch. He's so well, much better inside than what Larry Bird was in that. But, I mean, they're just totally different kind of players. But Bird was pretty bad. He was sneaky good. He The Obi Toppin is – he's, he's a, a fast he's, jumper. and He's and, a freaky athletic, man. He's, so, he'll be – his game will translate better to the NBA than, than I think even guys that are, you know – considered to be great big guys like I, he's I think a modern play day right he looks like a modern day nba player totally agree i totally agree. and by I mean, that i mean a todd knows what i mean but by that i mean the league is is changing the, the, the type of player so much. right the type of player what they do the big guy stepping out and just knocking it down from outside all day long i mean it's it's almost interchangeable it's getting to the point I, i'm not going to call it positionless basketball but man the days of the guard guard forward forward center I don't know if that exists anymore. No, it definitely doesn't. But, but you know, l- let me give you a, you know, we had some good conversations with French Lick and, and talking about the Bet Rivers and possibly doing something for the NCAA tournament there last night. Let me give you a bet you might want to go place. You can get Dayton at plus 1,500 right now to win the NCAA tournament. You bet 100 to win 1,500. Damn, we meant Dayton to do that. Is, Dayton is easily – one of the top five teams that has a chance of winning. Oh, I guarantee it. That to, that's a, to me, that's a good bet right there. That's a great, that's a great odds bet. Right From there. a numbers wise, my where's Mattress golly. Mac? Where's Mattress Mac right now when you need him to place a million dollar bet on something? We'll see if they'll take that at 1500 to one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got a lot more coming up, man. Matt Weaver from Peaks is going to join us next. Indiana's got a new defensive line coach, finally. We'll talk about that. Lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Larry. We're coming to you from the golf club at Eagle Point Studios, and we're back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Ray Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moye. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. 
Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this hump day. You know what that means. Our good friend Matt Weaver from Peaks.com is going to join us. Matthew, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I can't complain, man. Uh, Todd doesn't want to listen to it anymore, so uh, I guess we'll just have to make it through, man. Uh, Indiana finally gets her defensive line coach, Matt, uh, after a little do si with the uh, guy from Michigan State, but they've got their guy now. Yeah, Kevin Peoples uh, coming up from uh, Tulane. Uh, been at a been at a few different places, um, you know, mainly in the south. Uh, you know, I d- didn't know a ton about him before, but uh, you know uh, what I heard about how he did on his interview with the staff. Uh, he was impressive, and and um, he interviewed actually the same day that Burton did, and I think it was a pretty close call. I think Burton's probably initially got the offer because of his experience in the Big Ten, and just the fact that Indiana has seen him obviously year in and year out. Uh, you know, at Michigan State. Uh, but Peoples was uh, was an impressive guy from what I was told, and, and he's done a good job in the places he's been, put a number of guys in the NFL, even though he's never coached at a bunch of high high major programs. So, and we'll see how it goes. But you know, from a coaching standpoint, it seems like it's a pretty uh, pretty solid hire. And, and Indiana, you know, they lost a lot. But I mean, they, Mark Hagan was a, a great coach. He was an Indiana guy, had connections, and so he, that, that's a tough tough uh, guy to replace uh, especially when you don't have those same type of connections but by doing that you're bringing in new connections for this staff yeah he's um you know with his time at with his time at uh Tulane you know he's uh he's recruited uh in Louisiana which is you know I don't think Indiana's gonna you know start blanketing that state but you know he's obviously got some ties down there I mean the highest rated recruit in the Tulane class is a defensive lineman from New Orleans, and he would be the second highest recruit rated recruit in the Indiana class, the 2020 class. So, you know, he's got some ties down there. Now, obviously, in Louisiana, you know, the, the, the top guys are going to LSU. I mean, that's just, you know, it's going to be really tough. But not all of them can go to LSU. So, you know, if you've got some connections, you know some coaches, you've got some ins at some high schools uh, in, that, in that state, and, and it's uh, kind of an under, underrated state for football. Um, football talent. It's obviously not Florida or some other places, but there's a number of good players down there. And there's other areas I'm sure he's recruited. He's been at uh, what, Georgia Southern, I think, and then um, you know some other places, Arkansas. Um, you know, so he's he's got. I'm sure he's got ties to other places. But you know, the Louisiana one is kind of intriguing just because of uh, you know the city of New Orleans. You know, has some really good football players coming out of there. Absolutely, and I know it's kind of a slow period uh, in college football right now, but. It's this kind of calm before the mini storm because we're getting closer and closer to spring football, as hard as that is to imagine. Yeah, it starts, I think, with Indiana being the seventh. Uh, the dead, we're in a dead period right now. This used to not be a dead period in, in football recruiting. It used to be a time when, when schools would still kind of do what I would call mini junior days. Like if you had a basketball game on like a Wednesday or Thursday, a home game, you might bring in like six, seven, eight guys, you know, probably, usually local guys so they can drive down. Uh, you can't do that anymore because they have a dead period after the second signing period until the end of February. So starting March 1st, it's back open and recruiting. Uh, when I say open, it's uh, what they call it. I think it's a quiet period, which means guys can come on campus. Coaches can't go off campus. So you can start having visitors. There'll be another junior day on March 7th, which I think is the first day of spring ball. And then there'll be a number of guys visiting all throughout spring practice. But, yeah, spring ball starting back up. Really interesting to see how they look. It seems like the season just ended. We talked about it last week, how, how quick it's gone by. But, you know, I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to seeing them back on the field and, and uh, kind of, you know, just where they're at as a, as a team. Sounds good. Anything else new for this program that uh, a lot of people may not know about? No, it's just kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of, I don't say in a holding period because it's never, you never really are in a holding period. It's, you know, 24-7, 365, but it is a little bit of a slower period. You can't practice with your team when they're doing strength conditioning. You can't really do a whole lot of recruiting other than messages as an occasional phone call. So it's just kind of, they're probably just gearing up for spring ball, getting their plan together. Um, and obviously probably starting to set their 2021 recruiting board, really get it in line and who they really want to target and go after. So um, you know, I think there'll be more news coming coming down the pipe, and and uh, but it's uh, you know we're like you said we're getting close to it, really getting back in uh, full gear for football. Absolutely, anything you've got coming up that the people need to know about, Matt? 
Uh, I'll have some. Uh, I'll have some more uh, uh, recruiting stories on guys that made some junior day visits. Uh, you know, we just put one out yesterday. I don't know a guy who made a junior day visit, but a big old lineman out of New Jersey. He's really excited about visiting Indiana, coming for like three days and uh, uh, the weekend of the spring game. And uh, Kevin Wiggington's his name, and um, uh, you know, looks like a good prospect. Really a good academic kid. Business is important to him. So and I'll have some more stories on guys that I talked to recently that I'll be making visits. Uh, you know, coming up or I've made recent visits, so people can look forward to those. Absolutely. Make sure you check that out. Matt Weaver with Peaks.com. He's got your complete coverage for Indiana football. Matthew, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Okay, take care, guys. You bet. There's Matt Weaver from Peaks.com getting us caught up on Indiana football news with uh, a new defensive line coach for the Hoosiers. Uh, Should have made Todd the new defensive line coach. Get him in there. Rough him up a little bit. I just gave, in in that interview, I just gave all of my football interest. (laughs) Or knowledge. Yeah, knowledge. (laughs) I mean, this time of year, I love football season. It's one of the best, best events to watch on TV, one of the best sports, but once it's over, man, it's over to me. You talk about a dead period. I got a dead period until <laughs> August, until August, September of next year. I got a football dead period. He's got a dead period in his hand with football, man. That's no funny. Doubt. Ah, that that's funny. I don't care who you are. Uh, Charlie Strong. Speaking of football, how about Charlie Strong, the former Louisville coach, former Texas coach, now heading to Alabama, the staff as a defensive analyst. Um, man, he's. He does a lot of strange this things. Is, this is my point. Okay, so so explain this to me. And you, you've you always said, hey, you know, they're allowed to do it because they've got 100 and some players versus basketball only has 15. But there is such a, such a tight – there's such a tight chain on – how many coaches you're allowed to have? He's a defensive analyst. Well, he will not – coordinator. I'm going to guess that he will have no – activities involving directly involving players i'm going to imagine he's going to be a behind the scenes and doing things like watching the games picking the defensive out thing i I doubt he's going to be working directly with the players well then i I need to be hired as an offensive analyst for for iu then there you go and and it would be completely legal i I don't know Uh, maybe you're right Maybe, I think, so I maybe mean, it all has to do with dealing with the, you know, dealing with the players. Maybe you're probably you're probably exactly right on that. How about it this? It just seems weird how many coaches they have. Yeah, well, that's yeah, 113 players, a lot of people to manage. Also, some football news: Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, pardoned Edward DeBartolo Jr. If you remember that name from the San Francisco 49ers, the DeBartolo family, uh, five Super Bowls, the the 49ers won under his leadership back then, but uh, no longer there. He ran into some problems when he tried to buy. What did he try to buy in Louisiana? He paid the like governor. A, like a, uh, a gaming license. Or yeah, he paid like the that. governor like $400,000 for a gaming license. I it thought that was called politics. I didn't even know that was. It is in Louisiana. It definitely is in Louisiana. They definitely get by. But there is, uh, and Todd imparted some knowledge on me that I didn't realize. You know, the Simon Group that owns like the Mall of America and all that, and the the, the Bartolo and the, and family, the Pacers. I, I and the Pacers uh, and everything else in half of Indiana. But um, and, and the 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 Bartolo family, I, they are also were into real estate. But I did not realize that they were combined together in business and a lot of things. Todd, what were some of the things? What the the, things com- the company about? used to be called the Simon de Bartolo Group. So it was they owned uh, the fashion shop small out at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, which I think is one of the highest retail per square foot. At least it used to be, uh, you know, twenty years ago when they were involved in it. But I mean, they all the malls that are, I don't want to say all, most of the malls that they owned as a company were owned together as the Simon de Bartolo Group. But then they had that split after. Ed DeBarlow got in trouble and, and, uh, you know, everything became the Simon property group at that point, but he also pretty much, that was also his exit from the NFL. He wasn't kicked that he was suspended for like a year, I think, but he wasn't kicked out, but he never did return. I think his sister, uh, runs the, 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 uh, right. the team now, and he just never got back into it. But it was pretty amazing to hear some of the quotes from Jerry Rice and Ronnie Lott and some of the San Francisco 49ers. They greats. freaking love the dude. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, they, I mean, they showed up at, at the – You're you know, damn the right they did. So. I mean, their biggies showed up. So that tells you they had a lot of respect for him. When Jerry uh, Rice says there's no way we win five Super Bowls without him, uh, that that's pretty much that's a pretty that's good endorsement from a, yeah. a high class player. 
a not just timer. a talented player, but a guy with that's you know known around the league to have you know a lot of class. Plus, he gets the pardon from the president, so now he's uh he's rolling. I, I don't. None of that makes any sense to me. Like, I don't know why. Why would you do? Why would you put yourself out? Uh, he there? All, he mean, pardoned uh, Blagojevich, the, the Chicago guy who tried to sell yeah, Obama's seat too. He was on that show that he did. Uh, 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 oh gosh, what was Trump's show? Oh, you're fired, Jake. Come on, man. You're fired, you know. He did the you're fired. Intern, not the intern, but something oh, like that. The... No. Uh, oh, my God. I know. I can't, I can't think it. of the name. I can't think of the name of it either. Gee whiz. Anyway, he was on Trump's show. Somebody text us that. What was yeah, I can't that? believe that they haven't already. I, I'm shocked. I can't believe I can't come up. It, it, it is. It's not the intern, but it's like. I, yeah, golly, I, I, I hate when I can't think of a word that's just sitting there. But anyway. regardless of all that, like, I'm, it, you know, whether you. You support Trump or don't? I'm not giving my opinion one way or the other. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying it doesn't make any sense. Like, like why why put yourself out there and do that? I don't I don't get it. I, maybe maybe all presidents do it, and I just forget because it's for. Oh, they do. They away. they do, but they usually do it when they're going out of office. When when they don't care, That's Trump he doesn't right. care. He just does it whenever. Uh, hey, Brad, the Apprentice. Thank you, Brad the and Jasper. You Thank you, my God. You are very close. Not the intern, but the apprentice. Yes. Tim got the apprentice too. Yeah, they're coming. Boy, they're rolling in now. It took a second for them, but they're all everybody's hitting it up now. But we thank you, yeah, for that. Joker says, uh, worst scenario for IU going to Penn State with Penn State coming off of a loss. IU will not match Penn State's willingness to win. If you bet the game, take Penn State minus the points. Stone cold lock. That's from Joker. He says, Hey Todd, 1500 to one on a hundred dollar bet. Would be a hundred and fifty thousand. It's not fifteen hundred to one. It's it's a hundred. You bet a hundred to win fifty. It's fifteen to one, not fifteen hundred to one. Yeah, there you go. I'll take it though. I'll yeah. take it. I mean, you bet a hundred to win fifteen hundred. That's pretty good odds on a team that you know. Apprentice. If you, you take the top five teams, you think have a chance of making it. It's worth worth a shot if you have the money. The apprentice. The apprentice, the, yeah, I know. The celebrity I'm, I'm apprentice. Text, I'm getting texts in the Oh, they're, it'll, it'll be coming for the next three hours now. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> How about Dennis Rodman on The Apprentice? Oh, if you think I watched that show one time, you're crazy. Oh, I did. I, I did. I guarantee you I did. I watched that stuff. I like to just pull In the me. words of Ron Felling, I would rather watch a monkey, a football. Yeah, 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 I know. I uh, I like to pull from uh, different places. Hey, we got lots more coming up here. Well, I guess we don't have to break yet, do we, Jake? Hey, Jake, just let us know it's The Apprentice. Good work, Jake. Good good timing, bud. Oh, is he just now getting on? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's just now giving Jake. us the report. It's The Apprentice. Thanks, buddy. Well, he didn't even tell us in our ear. He's, he's, he just says Jimmy it over Sutton the... sent it to me faster than Jake did. And he's probably in class. <laughs> our intern, Jimmy Sutton, he's probably in class right now, and he's still got it here quick enough. Uh, let's see. What else? John Beeline. Gone from Cleveland. Who in that? Uh, we talked about this before we went on today. I like to know. I like to sit down in a room and look to the guy's face and say, "Okay, now really, seriously, you thought this would work, you idiot? What What were you thinking?" I don't. I mean, so many decisions happen at that level in the NBA that you just wonder about. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it, it, here's what here's what happened. You know, I've I've come to the conclusion things happen for a reason and for the university of michigan it worked out great because they got Jawan howard back there the timing all played out perfectly and they've probably got their coach for the next you know 15 to 20 years and john beeline is is on to the next chapter of his life and who knows where that'll end up whether he'll coach anymore my guess we'll probably see him in the studio i doubt we see him coach anymore because at his age, I mean, who's going to hire – what big-time program is going to hire a 67-year-old man for a three- to five-year fix? The only program that would do that would be somebody who is in deep doo-doo and just needs a quick anything, just a, a quick positive shot. But even then, I don't know that he could deliver that because you got to go out and do recruiting and all that stuff and, and go through that whole process. And like you point out, dude, 67, man. And, and I'm not saying that, that – uh, Hey, I'm not an age discriminist, but that's a lot. That's a that's a long process. 
it, when, when you're when you're hiring, I mean, as as an AD, unless you're trying to fix a problem or, or just put a band aid on something, or you have a longer term plan and you know what guy you want to hire down the road, um, you know, you, you don't go hire somebody that you think probably only has a three to five year, you know, t- span of being there. I mean, you're looking at more of the long term, and and so it's hard to recruit. Everything works against you, and and so hiring a 67 year old you know, to come into your program that just doesn't, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Nope. And, but the good thing for him, he's got paid. He got paid. He's, he's, he doesn't need money. He's good. He, he can, he can do whatever he wants. The best route would be like you suggested the, the studio. Um, I don't know that the studios wouldn't discriminate age wise, not discriminate, but you know, young, fresh, hotter, younger, I mean, let's just be honest. Women, men, young guys, look at the Big Ten Network. Look how many young – I mean, some of these guys, they look like they're 12 years old, man. I mean, they're fresh-faced. Look like they just started shaving. And I'm not getting on them. I'm just saying it's a youth movement. They really like that youth. So, uh, But I, I I think he would be invaluable in the studio. We'll certainly find out. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, he seems like he's had the personality when you've seen inter- you know post-game interviews with him and things like that. I've never really – studied him and, and what he says a whole lot. So I don't know if he'd be good at it or not, but he just seems like he's had a good personality and done a good job on interviews. So he's one of those guys that I think would transition to the, you know, like they brought Bob Knight in and had him on ESPN for several years. I mean, I think John Beeline would be great at that. My favorite Bob Knight was he was doing a game. And for whatever reason, the, the his, their, their table was set back a little bit. It was like a, a row back from everyone else that sits, you know, all the people that sit along the, the courtside seats. Well, so, either they were standing up or something, but it was pissing him off. <laughs> he was during a game, and he just yells, hey, you want to you want to come back here and do the game and let me sit there, or you want to sit down? <laughs> and he just yells this while they're doing the middle of a broadcast. It was just great, classic Bob Knight. But that was toward the end of his broadcasting career, I believe. Yeah, he was, uh, <laughs> you know, he needed to do a show on, like, Cable XM or cable TV, where <laughs> yes. he could say whatever he wanted to. I'm not unfiltered. Barstool. He should have been on Barstool because that would have been entertaining. Could you put him with Pat McAfee? That would have been entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that would have been fun. All right, we're going to get to a break. we got a little bit more to get to before we wrap it up here today. It's game day, Indiana basketball on the road at Minnesota tonight at 9 o'clock. That means after the game comes to you approximately two hours later, live from Yogi's after the game with Todd Leary. We're back with more on Indiana Sports Beat from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios right after this. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. 
voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times. The golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tee time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lord, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Bad theater seats, cheap Halloween masks, my apartment, all things with obstructed views. Add to these large trucks and buses. 18-wheelers and large buses have big blind spots, and like my apartment, they don't always have the best view. Bus and truck drivers deal with blind spots around the entire vehicle. Always take care not to ride alongside or too close behind them. Our roads, our safety. Learn more at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Hi, this is A.J. Moyer, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Coming to you from the Golf Club League of Point Studios here on this game day, Wednesday, February 19th. The Hoosiers taking on the Golden Gophers tonight up in the barn at 9 p.m. After the game, we'll follow immediately afterwards live from Yogi's, live uh, after the game with Todd Leary, that is. Hopefully, we'll be talking about a win, Todd Leary, and that will uh, take a lot of pressure off of that Hoosier team as far as making the tournament. A lot of pressure off Archie Miller. You know, it does a lot for my mood, too, to be honest with you. <laughs> my, uh, my Thursday will go a lot better if there's a win tonight. I'll sleep better tonight. So this is all pretty much about me is what I would prefer a win for. But, yeah, I mean, I, I this is the time of year. You've, you've got to do something to separate yourself from a lot of those other bubble teams. This is, this is you know, we've talked about the parity. We've talked about how deep the Big Ten is and all that. It, just going through it and looking at all of the different conferences, there are more teams on the bubble this year than any other year. And and I don't know if the parody has caused that or whatever it is, but the bubble, which usually is probably, I'll say 10 teams on the bubble. I, I bet there's 40 teams on the bubble and I'm not kidding. And and I can make an argument for all 40 of them. So it's, it's, you need to separate yourself right now. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about that Baylor, Dayton, uh, Gonzaga, those are some teams that separate. Kentucky. Kentucky's a team that's getting better. They went on the road to LSU last night, and they beat LSU 79-76. It's a good win for for, for the Wildcats. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, they have – I hate to say it because I hate to admit this, but they have gotten better all year long. And they started out as a team that, um, you know, I wasn't all that impressed with and did not think it would be – I think this is one of John Calipari's better coaching jobs – and One of finally, his only coaching jobs. He's got a mix of players that are, you know, they're 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 S- better. I mean, they're, you know, they're older. They're older. Estina, that yeah. grad transfer yep. uh, that had he started out shooting really well, went through a slump. He's kind of back, and it's kind of helping Kentucky because he helped them last night get that big road win. That's now that's a freaking road win right there. Right. Yeah. And and they've uh, you know they've won three road games in a row. They won at Tennessee, at Vanderbilt, and at LSU in the last four ball games. So you talk about separating yourself. They've they've played themselves right from a uh, you know probably looking at a four or five seed to probably all the way up to a two seed right now, which is is kind of crazy. But there's still a lot to go. But that's a team that's played them. You know, they've separated themselves. They really have. And they've done it through going on the road and getting some wins. And, and you know, they're not that talented of a team. The Indiana can do the same thing they're doing. So it, this would be the night to start doing it. To Tom Crean uh, in Georgia. Who is it? Oh, they play Auburn tonight. Yeah, they're terrible. Auburn or Tom Crean? I know Tom, Tom Crean. Yeah, Georgia's awful. I mean, the, they've got a great player on their team. but the they're Tom awful. Crean peaches. 
the Rockford Pizzas, Tom Crean Pizzas. Yeah, they're not they're 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 a one man band. I mean, you got a top five player in the country, and you're twelve and thirteen on the season. Yeah. Oh, what, you're, what's you're life going to be like for them? What's life going to be like for them next year when he's gone and he's gone? Yeah, I mean, even people, worse. Yeah, people that think that he's doing great things down there. I don't, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not seeing that. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about because they're yeah they're they're one player away from imploding. Well, I mean, even even having that player, they're not going to make the tournament. So, I mean, I don't. I hear that a lot about people defending Tom Crean when he was here. Tom Crean is a great, great, great person. He's a good all around person, no question about it. Does not make you a great basketball coach. I know a lot of great people. They would not be great basketball coaches. And so, me saying he's not a great coach is not an indictment against him as a person. I think he's a great person. Pretty good recruiter. Decent. He's okay occasionally. But you got to do something with them once you recruit. Yeah, I mean, it's just I, we don't even need to get into all that. They're that's a they're a bad team, and they've got a really good player on it. That's about it. So tonight, Butler. How about number twenty one, Butler at number sixteen, Seton Hall tonight, man. Yeah, Seton Hall already came to Hinkle Fieldhouse and won earlier this year. So that's the one you would expect Seton Hall to win. But you know, Butler's a team. I really earlier in the year I thought they were much better. I think they have declined throughout the year. Well, I think we've um, seen a lot of teams hit that that midseason. Now do we see Butler bounce back? Do we see a lot of these teams bounce back? Do we see Butler bounce back? Here's an excellent opportunity. Man, if you can go on the road and, and repay them for that loss they handed the uh, Bulldogs, that would be a great way to get your end of the season started. I mean, Butler right now has lost six of their last ten. They're still ranked 21st in the country, and they've lost six of their last ten games. And they play at Seton Hall tonight and at Creighton on Sunday. Creighton just went to Marquette and won on the road. So, the Big East is, is is pretty damn good conference. The, the, it's got five. It's got five good teams in it. Beyond that, the other five teams or four teams or whatever in that conference are crap. Like they're right. terrible. But they're pretty. That those five. Those are pretty five. Pretty daggone good teams. Yeah, I, I, you know a bubble team that's on there that that's you know Indiana fans are going to need to root against is is Xavier. Xavier's a team that, um, I mean, they, they Indiana does not. They're seventeen and nine right now, and they're going to be a team at the end of the year that that you know Indiana fans need them to have three or four more losses. Well, Indiana's just going to like, like we they, said. Indiana needs to take, take care, care of their, of their own. own. Yep. They control business. their own destiny, no doubt. And games left tonight uh, on the road at Minnesota. Then they got Penn State coming here on Sunday. Um, and then they're back on the road at Purdue next week. I mean, that, that that's that's a rivalry game. I mean, man, that could do so many things. But you, you have no expectations of going to West Lafayette and winning. But, my goodness, the ramifications, if you were able to do that, what they would be. Yeah. I mean, the quad one win on the road. Um, I mean, it just bumps you up so much and tonight's win would be a quad one win on the road. Um, so these, these next two or three road games are gigantic from the standpoint of putting Indiana in a position where they're, they're not on the bubble and you know, they, they control their own destiny. We can, we will, we'll, we'll be in a position where I, I really believe, um, you know, hopefully, this Indiana team takes away all of the, you know, all the option of, of possibly not making the tournament. And and they've got to put it on themselves and go get some big wins. Dr. Other J teams hit, are doing it. Dr. J hit up the text line. I love the optimism from Todd. I catch hell from other IU fans for agreeing with him, but I just wish the team would perform. Tonight would be the barometer for the entire end of the season. It's it's That is right on. I agree with that. I mean, this is – uh, you know, you, you, you don't want to get to the point where all of a sudden you turn it on and it's too late. And right now it's not too late. And I'm optimistic because I've seen what the team is capable of. There are teams across the country that I, that are on the bubble that they've are, they're playing to their ceiling and I don't think they can play any better. And Indiana's not one of those. And if they can elevate themselves to get the most out of themselves as an individual and as a team, they will win, you know, one or two of these road games and win all their home games. And if they do that, they'll easily be in the tournament. And if you live in southern Indiana and you should be going to Reynolds Family Dentistry for your dental needs and seeing Dr. J or Roger because they are great IU fans, 
So especially for an IU listener, you need to be going to Reynolds Family Dentistry in Southern Indiana. And let but, Dr. J tell you how right Todd is all the time. I mean, that's worth that's worth going on its own, isn't it? Can you imagine? I mean, going to the dentist, no one is bad right, enough. And no one likes dentist. going to the dentist, but but you have to do it. And Dr. J's as good a place as any because he's as nice as, as anybody. But but I gotta tell you. I don't know if I want to sit there and listen to him talk to me about Todd Leary for the time while he's got his hands shoved in my throat with those big old sharp needles. Just make it, it makes the pain in your mouth not as bad as the pain in your ears. I mean, there you got that going for you. There is that, man. Uh, you may have a good point. You may have a good point. Well, man, we're we're gonna be out at Yogi's tonight. Of course, it's gonna be a late one, but uh, we'll be there. Come on out, watch the game with us if you like. We got the uh, new uh, got the new open area. Oh, in that's Yogi's right. They Yogi's. got the game area open there at Yogi, so that's open. That that thing keeps keeps drawing people. But uh, tip is nine o'clock tonight. We'll be there. Uh, of course, more importantly, though, we'll be there after the game with Todd Leary to talk about what happened. So make sure you're with us either way, uh, online or um, at Yogi's Live. But uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. That's going to wrap it up. Thanks a lot to the great Greg Doyle from the Indianapolis Star for joining us today. Love having Greg on. Uh, great interview with him. Matt Weaver, of course, from Peaks.com joins us as always. And uh, we're back tomorrow, of course. Do I have our guests lined up tomorrow? I don't think so. I know who I got in mind. But until then, for Jake, for Todd Larry, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio.